All right, Shalom. I want to give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Wakar Kodash. Say double honors to the apostles and the bishop elders at Great Millstone for teaching his word and truth and sincerity and for ruling well. And salutations to my fellow Akim across the four corners of the globe, preaching and prophesying in the name of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Hey, I'm your brother Gabar Yahweh, Duff from GMS Hawaii, coming to you with another lesson. <clears throat> and this lesson is, uh, is on idolatry. And it's, I guess I'm entitled with the, the pantheon of the heathens because um, all of these heathen nations, they have uh, they have uh, a pantheon of gods. And when you type in the word pantheon, okay, pantheon, the definition for the word pantheon, all right, so I can, pantheon is a group or of particular respected famous or important people, it says of all the gods of the people or religion collectively it says the deities of the hindu pantheon so these different nations you know east indians edomites um hamites japhites which we're going to focus on a little bit on in this lesson you know they're they're known for having uh, a pantheon of idols man which they call gods and they're not gods they're just idols all right this is the book of psalms 96 verse 5 it says, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but Yahweh, the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Shai, made the heavens. All right, when um, this is a cross reference, uh, Psalms 115 and 3. But our God is in heaven, he have done whatsoever he please. Uh, verse 4, it says, Their idols are their idols are silver and gold, the works of men's man the work of men's hands. Yep. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes, they they eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they but they handle not. Feet ha have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. Yep. And um, Apostle Gobar had did a video on Molech that I'll. That they have in the Bohemian Grove, and which is an idol, and um, that owl it has the voice of uh, they have a voice recording of uh, the man that created that owl, and uh, it's a recording, so it plays. So they act like this thing is really talking, but it's not. You know, it's a recording. It's a recording devices inside of it. You know, it's an idol. But these Edomites, these high-level politicians in this country and lawyers and judicial people they uh they go to the bohemian grove and they worship this idol called molech or uh i forget what they call it the owl and and bohemian grove right the owl and the bohemian grove it says since founding since the uh, since the founding of the club the bohemian grove mascot has been an owl all right it says has been an owl symbolizing wisdom a 30 foot 9 meter hollow owl statue made of concrete over steel supports stands at the head of the lake in the grove this statue was designed by scope designed by sculptor and two-time club president hey uh patagin Patag patagin which is again which is an idol this thing is an idol right here what's it at Let's see if I can find it. I think this is it right here. Somewhere right here. But they do all kinds of wickedness in this uh in this uh in this place. And it's closed off to regular people. Like you can't get in there unless you're an Edomite that uh who was invited there. Or or a nigga that was invited there. But um the Bohemian Grove, they have an idol there, right? And it says it was constructed in the late nineteen twenty, since nineteen twenty nine. The Owl Shrine has served as a backdrop for the yearly cremation of care ceremony, which they kill a, a, a person. You know, they get away with murder. Every year they do it. It happens around July. It says the cremation of care ceremony is a the, 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 um, theatrical production in which some of the club's members participate as actors. It was first conducted in 1881. The production was devised by James F. Bowman with George T. Bomley playing the high priest. It was originally set up within the plot of a series of hijinks. 
dramatic performances on the first weekend of the summer encampment. After which the spirit of care, this is all, this is all uh, say, uh, demonic, satanic and demonic, after which the spirit of care slain by a jinx hero was solemnly, solemnly cre cremated. The ceremony served as a cath catharsis for pent up high spirits. <laughs> you see this? Thing? So when they get pent up, they kill somebody, man. To present symbolically the salvation of of the trees by the club, so they worship in trees, groves. This is, uh, uh, this place is nothing but a grove. That's why they call it grove play. You know. It says uh, the ceremony takes place in front of the owl shrine, the mosque, and the lichen covered statue simulates a natural rock formation, yet holds electrical audio. Here it is right here. Yet holds electrical and audio equipment within it. For many years, a recording of the voice club of the voice of club member Walter Cronkite was used as the voice of the owl during the ceremony. And this man is held was held in high esteem when he was alive in this world. You know, Walter Cronkite, but he was an insider. You know, he was an elitist. He's a, a, a demon, right? And they and these people, they go in these, they go in these places and they worship idols. This is what the nations do. That's why the scripture says what? Uh, Psalms 95, 96 and 5, for all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. That's right, man. Because these idols, they didn't make anything. You know, these different Hawaiian gods, these Greek gods, which, which you know, Jake went into that shit too, big time. That's why we in the condition we in today, because of our, our, our idolatry. Every sin that you commit comes stems from that. Stems from idolatry. Every sin. It, idolatry is a sin in itself. It's like the number one sin. Having worship in another God outside of the Most High. And the Lord said this. He said, I will not give my glory to another. Um, this is uh, Isaiah 42 and 8. Isaiah 42 and 8 says, I am the Lord, Yahweh Shai, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images, man. And our people did that. Went off and we did that. And then now we here. You know, call ourselves acting like the heathens, man. Being like the heathens. And being like them is what's got us destroyed. Because these heathens don't have any understanding of Yahweh Shai. They don't have any understanding of 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 the the greatness and the power and majesty and and and, and grace and mercy of Yahweh Shai. One, because he didn't give it to them. It wasn't given unto them heathens to have that. It was only given unto us. All right. This is Isaiah forty eight and two. I'm sorry. Forty eight and um. Swap here. Forty two and eight. Uh, uh, um. Yeah, Isaiah 42. Yeah, this is Isaiah 42 and 8. Isaiah 42 and 8. Okay. Yeah, Isaiah 42 and 8. It says, I am the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. That is my name. I am the Lord, Yahweh. We say, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, in the name of his son. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven image. And when you look up that word for glory, and my glory, the Hebrew word there is kabawad, ka, kabawad, and it says honor, riches, abundance, splendor, dignity. And these nations, they had to give honor to things made of hands because they don't know the Lord, right? I live here in uh, Hawaii, the islands of Hawaii, and um, you know we here with with nothing but heathens, man. These days they don't they don't venerate their idols like they used their their original idols like they used to. They venerate the idol of Jesus Christ, right? They venerate that today. But um, <clears throat> these heathens over here they they used to in all of these islands, not just the Hawaiian Isles, the Tongan, Samoa, all these Polynesians, they got the same idols, man. You know, just different names. It says this is it says it's right here. A group of islands in the Central Pacific Ocean, Hawaii is a part of the West region of the United States, more than 2,000 miles west of California. Between the 4th and 7th centuries CE, Polynesians settled in the region and introduced the worship of four main gods, Cain, Ku, Lono, and Kanaloa, and several lesser deities. Each aspect of nature became associated with a god or goddess. 
whose tales were kept alive in oral traditions. Right. So these heathens, they would worship uh, these idols, you know what I'm saying? Because they would, they would deem it <clears throat> something that, like a natural a natural occurrence, you know, what they call nature. They would, they would worship it. Well, guess what? The Lord said that in the priest, in the scriptures. This is, uh, I want to read actually Deuteronomy uh, uh, 4, 26 on down, but I'm going to go to the point to to make this point it says and um um so lock just bear with me uh just bear with me all right this is uh deuteronomy chapter um uh, deuteronomy this is deuteronomy deuteronomy chapter um four verse fourteen it says and the lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord Yahweh spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. And our people did that. That's another reason why the Lord hid his face, hides his face from Jake, you know, you heard the voice of the Lord. You didn't see his face because Jake would have tried to create an image and try to worship that. Right? And it says, uh, it says, and and they say, what? It will corrupt this, man. Okay? It said it, it will corrupt this. Okay, let me see. Let me read that again. It says, uh, take ye therefore he unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make a graven image. The similitude of any figure, the likeness of any, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, the moon, the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God have divided unto all nations under the whole earth, man. Right, so, <clears throat> we're not supposed to worship these natural occurrences, and things like that, but this is what the heathen do. And then they create these stories and these individuals behind it, you know, but it's all idolatry man this is ancient hawaiians performed religious ceremonies at their temples known as heiau these temples were thought to be the source of mana or divine power and were restricted to the ruling chiefs and priests called kahuna they worshiped gods who took the form of idols fashioned from stone wood shells and feathers and did not the lord say he was going to put us in a place where we were going to end up uh, uh um uh, doing something like that, yeah, he sure did. That's one of the curses, man. Uh, when you scroll down, uh, uh verse um, twenty, uh, uh, yep, uh, twenty-eight. I'll start at uh, uh, twenty-seven. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. I'll start at twenty-six. I I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, that ye, that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land. Where unto ye go over the Jordan to possess it. So the Lord, through Moses, was telling Jake that he already knew we was going to go off and do what we was going to do. But he said we were going to what? We were going, um, we were going to utterly perish off the land. And it happened. Especially through the major captivities of the Assyrians and um, the Neo-Babylonian or Neo-Babylonian Assyrian Empire, which took both kingdoms, man. It says, uh, ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve gods, the works of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. <laughs> because that's what the that's what the heathens worship, man. They worship these uh, idols that they fashion from stone, wood, shells, or feathers. Hawaiian mythology has hundreds of gods and goddesses. But these are the following, are some of the most important. You know, they got a god, an idol called uh, Cain or Kane. 
the, the chief god of the pantheon. Kane was a creator and the god of light. There are several titles of be, beginning with the name Kane, but they all refer to the creator god. He calls the Tane and the Tahiti, New Zealand, Southern po Polynesia. People offer prayers, copper cloth, and mild intoxicants to the god. Since that's yeah, so what they do. You got Ku, the god of war, Alono, the god of agriculture, Kanalo, Kanaloa, the, uh, the god of the ocean. And he, these are the same idols that they had in ancient Greece. You got, uh, was it Poseidon? You know what I'm saying? You had Hades. You know, you got Helen. All of these weird old idols, man. They were all idols, man. Uh, Hina being recognized as the goddess throughout all the Pantheon Islands. Hina is featured in several mythologies in Hawaii. She was the sister of wife of Ku and was revered as an ancestral god of all heavens and earth. It's all bullshit. Pele, the goddess of fire and the volcanoes. You see these heathens? This is what they do, man. And this is a little illustration. It's a little illustration right here. Of uh, it's about here. Find it. Yeah, these idols. These are some of the the idols that they made out of wood, and then some people made a caricature caricature of these idols. You know what I'm saying? But this is kind of lower, Kane, Ku, and Lono, and these things held no power at all. These were just some shit that was made with hands, man, and that people idolized, man. And they actually revered that shit. And then somebody wrote, or somebody drew like a a, a, a caricature, caricaturization of these so-called idols, these so-called gods, idols, Pele, uh, Kane, Papa, Lono, just weird shit, man. You know, the Japanese, they got the same thing. They got the same thing. Uh, and it is... Is a Nagi. Let's look at that person. Is a Nagi. Yeah, is a Nagi, formerly known as his Nagi Mo, meaning he who invites the male who invites, uh, is the creator deity of both creation and life. Japanese mythology. So the, all these, all these nations had these idols, and this is what separated us from these nations that we didn't have that. We had the living power. We got the living power, which is Yahweh Shemhawashai. We don't need to have a, 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 a God for all of these different things. When our power creates everything, you know what I'm saying? This is uh, uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 6. Keep therefore and do them. I'm sorry, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even, even as the Lord my God commanded me. Uh, it says that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep there, therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who have the Heavenly Father so nigh unto them, or a power so nigh unto them, as Yahweh, our God, is in all things that we call upon him for? Right, man. And these heathens, they don't know the Lord, so... You know, he hides himself from them. They ain't, they ain't got no understanding of the Lord. But it ain't just the Polynesians that do this shit. You got these East Indians. They got the same thing. You got the Japanese, the East Indians, the, the Japhetic people, the so-called Polynesian people, you know, the Hermetic people, you know what I'm saying? And even Jake got idols that they worship from these different nations. You got uh, important Hindu deities, Shiva, Rama, Ganesh, Vishnu. Krishna, and these are just nothing but shit made with hands, man. A, 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 a elephant idol, you know, or an idol with six arms, you know. It's just a bunch of BS, man, you know. And it's not real. That's why the Lord said, don't be afraid of, of, of that shit when you see it, man. You know, because people, they'll venerate this, and they'll actually believe that this these things got to do something to you. And they can't do shit to you. They can't even do shit for themselves, man. And a good uh a good uh story is Bell and the Dragon. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I'm gonna read a portion of it. You know, which Daniel when he was uh you know, when Daniel was given uh was told by Cyrus to worship them idols, he said no. 
You know what I'm saying? Straight up. And Cyrus ain't do nothing. He ain't, he ain't triple him or nothing. He was like, all right. But he believed on our idols until Daniel showed him that, hey, look, them shits ain't, ain't real. This is uh, Bell and the Dragon, 1 verse 1. The king of stages was gathered to his fathers, and Cyrus of Persia, this is Cyrus the Great, received his kingdom. And it says, and Daniel conversed with the king and was honored above all his friends. And it says, now the Babylonians had an idol called Bell, and there were spent upon him every day twelve great measures of fine flour and forty sheep and six vessels of wine. And the king worshipped it and went daily to adore it. But Daniel worshipped his own power. And the king said unto him, Why doest thou worship? Why doest thou not worship Bell? Who answered and said, Because I may not worship idols made with hands, but the living power, the living God, who have created the heaven and the earth and have sovereignty over all flesh. Right? Then said the king unto him, Thinkest thou not that Bell is a living God? Seest thou not how much he eateth and drinketh every day? <laughs> and then Daniel laughed. He's like, and Daniel smiled and said, O king, be not deceived, for this is but clay within and brass without. And did never eat or drink anything. Yep. That's right. So the king was wroth and called for his priest and said unto them, If ye tell me not who this is that devoureth these expenses, ye shall die. And it says, But if ye can certify to me that certify me that Bell devoureth them, then Daniel shall die. For he hath spoken blasphemy against Bell. And Daniel said unto the king, Let it be according to thy will. And Daniel had faith that was immeasurable. He had he he knew the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And as you keep reading this story, you're gonna see the power of the Lord. Save save Daniel. You know, I think Daniel got thrown into the uh, the lions then twice, man. You know what I'm saying? So this is like the first occasion of him getting thrown into a lions den. But you can read it yourself. It says, let me keep on reading verse ten, right? It says, now the priests of Bel were three score and ten which is 70, besides their wives and children. And the king went into Daniel, and the king went with Daniel to, into the temple of Bel. And so Bel's priest said, Lo, we go out, but thou king, set on the meat and make ready the wine and shut the doors fast and seal it within thy own signet. And tomorrow when thou comest, if thou findest not, Bel have eaten up all, we will suffer death or else Daniel that speaketh falsely against us, which Daniel was speaking right against them he was speaking truth against them and they little regarded it for under the table they had made a privy interest see they they thought that daniel didn't know what was going on but daniel already knew that idol wasn't real anyway but the king didn't know that there was a door on a floor a trap door that they would go in and and hide and and then come out and eat all the goods man and that's what these pastors and these preachers do today you go into these harlot houses called churches and you think you're worshiping a, a, a God because you're not worshiping the living God and his only begotten son. You're worshiping some, uh, somebody called God and somebody called Jesus, which in this world is some Edomites, right? The Heavenly Father is a God. He is the ultimate God, but he has a name. His name is Yahweh. And his people always knew it. And he has the only begotten son. His name is Yahweh Shai. All right? So... These people, they go in there and they bring their they bring their sacrifices into this church, whether it be money, whether it be time, whether it be whatever their possessions, and and the, the pastor act like he, he you know he he doing the right thing by the one you call God and Jesus right ignorantly, and 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 he go he takes all that shit to the back and they divide it up, or he he take most of it to himself, man, you know, and he split it up amongst his people, and then they'll have you thinking that that money that you gave went to, to towards your spiritual uh betterment and it did all right and they in 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 idol uh, I, idolatry has always been a hustle for these nations as well as jake's and they little regarded it for under the table they had made a privy interest whereby they entered and continually and consumed those things so when they were going forth the king set meats before a bell now daniel had commanded his servants to bring ashes and those they strewed and and those they strewed throughout all the temple in the presence of the king alone. Then went they out and shut up the door and sealed it with the king's signet. So they departed. Now in the night, the priests with their wives and children, as they were wont to do, did eat and drink up all. 
All right. And it says in the morning, be, be time, the king arose and Daniel with him. It says, uh, and the king said, Daniel, are the seals whole? And he said, yes, O king, they be whole. And it says, as soon as he had opened the door, the king looked upon the table and cried with a loud voice, great art thou, O bell, and with thee is no deceit at all. <laughs> then laughed Daniel, <laughs> then laughed Daniel and held the king <laughs> as he should not go in. And he said, Behold, now the pavement, and mark well whose footsteps are these. Yep. And the king said, I see the footsteps of men, women, and children. And then the king was angry. And he took the priests with their wives and children, who showed him the privy doors where they came in and consumed such things as they were uh, upon the table. Therefore the king slew them and delivered Bell into the power, and delivered Bell into Daniel's power, who destroyed him. In his temple, man. All right, because them I, that idolatry is is complete wickedness. In order to be a part of that, you gotta do wickedness. The wicked sacrifices that they do, you know, the the the, the blood drinking, the murder, the the idolatry, the adultery, the prostitution, all of that shit. And now they got the whole world in this grip. They had the whole world in the grip of idolatry. That everything you do. Is idolatry. It goes back to idolatry. From the way you have sex. To the things that you eat. To the way that you think. To the things that you consume. Within your, your eye portals. Your mind. All of that shit goes back to idolatry man. And that's why your how about smell shot. has to come back and destroy this place. And, and, and set it up in righteousness. Because this place is wholly given into that. This is um. This is the book of. Uh, Ecclesiasticus. 10 and. 12 the beginning of pride is when one departed from the from the most high and his heart is turned away from his maker and that's exactly right man because that's where it all starts at people create these idols out of pride and then you when you, and, and, and pride starts when you depart from the lord now these nations they have never been a part of the lord but our people we have been okay and then that pride jumps up on jake and they and and they, the first thing they do is leave the lord and they worship these idols man yep that's right, man. It says, uh, for pride, for, for, uh, for pride is the beginning of sin and he that hath it shall pour out abomination. That's right. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. That's exactly right. You know, pride is the beginning of sin. And, 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 and from that you pour out abominations. This is, uh, wisdom of Solomon 14 and, um, um, 14 and uh, actually, I want to read this in there. 14 and 19. Let me see if I can get that real quick. Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 19. <clears throat> Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 19. It says, uh, for he pre adventure willing to please. One authority forced all his skill. Matter of fact, let me, let me start. This is a whole chapter is good. It speaks about idolatry. It's, uh, um, I'll start at 15. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 15. For after an afflicted, for after, I'm sorry, for a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he hath made an image of his child, soon taken away, now honored him as a god, which was then a dead man, and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. So these, when they would create idols, they didn't, they didn't just create the idol alone. They had to create what? Ceremonies and sacrifices unto him. You know? Thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as law. And then you can read about how um, Antiochus Epiphanes IV, he, he set up these laws that all people should worship their idols, you know, leave their their gods alone and worship him and, and, and the idols of, of the Greeks, man, and be like the Greeks. They leave their ways and everything. And some of our people even consented to this shit. Thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. Engraving images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. And I just said that. Yep. Whom men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit 
of his visage from far and made an express image of a king whom they honored to the end that by this their forwardness they might flatter him that was absent as if he were present and you you got that now like them uh you go to north korea them heathens over there they worship kim jong-un this fat fuck but they worship him as an idol man and they say like if if the picture is crooked in, in, in your house you can get put to death or sent to jail for that they, they send these secret police up in your crib and if the pictures ain't right you know you get put to death or if they're not up you get put to death you know i'm gonna see i'm gonna see if i can find an image we just read in Wisdom of Solomon about a king that stood far off, whom the pe the people they took his visage, they took his visage, the counterfeit. Let me read that again. Um, this is Wisdom of Solomon fourteen seventeen, whom men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off, so they weren't up close. There's, rarely could they get close to the so-called supreme leader, right? They took the counterfeit of his visage from far and made an express image of the king. Of a king whom they honored to the end that by this their forwardness they might flatter him that was absent as if he were there. And you see it right here. It's an image right here. These people actually bowing down to these idols. These are men. These these, they, these are not men. These are just fucking statues. But they were men at one point and they died. They fucking died. Fat, uh, heart attacks, diabetes. You know what I'm saying? They died. And then they're not here no more. So what they created these tall ass statues of these devils. And this is one family, the uh the ill, Kim Jong il and Kim Jong un, Kim Il sung, this is Kim Il sung, this is uh, Kim Jong il and this is son Kim Jong un. And when he dropped dead, they're gonna make a statue of this nigga. And this is what these heathens do. You know what I'm saying? They bowing down. And the Lord told us as Israelites that we're not supposed to bow down to no fucking images, man. No graven image, and this is a graven image, man. You know, and this is what the heathen do. It says right here, uh, in this article, North Koreans are literally worshiping Kim Jong un. It says it is fascinating an interview with blah 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 blah. It says North Korea is a is a perfect tyranny. Explain they have organized this tyranny in ways that were unimaginable to me, and people have been completely brainwashed. If the country goes through a real election today, I'm absolutely sure Kim Jong-un would win, a, win more than 99% of the votes without even trying to manipulate the people. All right? It says uh, he visited in 2012 just after Kim Jong-un assumed power. Contrary to popular perception, it was quite easy to travel there. He booked... I don't give a fuck about none of that. You know what I'm saying? But these people, they be crying over this dude. You, you'd think that this dude was... Uh, the most high or something, man. These 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 gooks, man. Look at this nigga, man. Fucked up ass haircut. It is a cult of personality, man. And he's nothing but a man. Uh, he's nothing but a man. He's no king. He's no god. You know? He's a he's a he's a man. He's a fat fuck, man, who's gonna get put to death. And in the kingdom of heaven, we're gonna break all these idols. And I'll end it off with that, man. The Lord said he's gonna be a visitation on all these idols. Yep, the book of oh, this is the same precept. I'm already I'm already in wisdom Solomon, wisdom Solomon, what chapter fourteen verse eleven? Yeah, wisdom Solomon fourteen and eleven. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation, because in a creature of the Most High are they become an abomination and stumbling blocks to the souls of men. And right, we're the creatures of the Most High, and where those where those men. That these idols became a stumbling block for us and caused us to go off and commit sin and iniquity, man. And a snare to the feet of the unwise. And when we were unwise, we jumped into that. And you got two thirds of our people that are unwise. So again, Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 11. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles, should that be a visitation? Because in the creature of the Most High, they are becoming an abomination and stumbling blocks to the souls of men. And a snare to the feet of the unwise, man. And this is a great example of that. You know, yeah, these people actually, you know, they create these mythological stories behind these idols, you know, and at one point they were just men. They shit, piss and ate, got hungry, got tired, sweat, and they end up dropping dead. You know, but it's no different than the other idols that these people worship. 
that the white Christ, that picture of Cesare Borgia or the picture of uh, Serapis Christus, they go back to human beings, people that was actually here. Cesare Borgia was a, a, a despot. Uh, Serapis Christus was a, a composite guy, but the image was that of Philadelphia's Ptolemy, and it was created by his father, uh, Ptolemy the First. man. You know? So I just wanted to bring this out, man. The Lord's going to destroy these, these idols, man. So with that, I say shalom on to the next.